Welcome to a new episode of Echpartasi. In this video I will show you the assembly and paint job of the Hangar 9 Fokker D7. I will not show you all the steps that are necessary to complete the Fokker D7. I will only explain the steps that I did a little bit different and the ones that were not really clear to me when I first read the manual. The first step I did was to glue the vertical step to the horizontal step. A piece of plastic is used to prevent gluing the horizontal onto the fuselage. It's important that you use enough glue to make this a solid construction, but not so much that the glue is going everywhere and it's making a mess. The best way for me to do this is by using a brush. Make sure you will put glue on both sides. It's very important that the angles of the vertical step are all good. When this is not right, you will get a plane that will not fly straight and you need to subtrim the rudder to compensate for this. While the glue for the vertical is curing, I continued with the tail skit. This tail skit is spring loaded so it will absorb the most shocks. The next step is the horizontal stabilizer. Also here you need to use enough glue because this is a very critical part of an airplane. Most planes will not fly without a horizontal stabilizer. Here I use a wire to check if the length from wingtip to the stabilizer is the same on both sides. The next step I will show you are the hinges. If you use this kind of hinges, it's very important that you drill a hole in the center of the slot. Drilling this hole provides a tunnel for the CA to fully wick into the hinge and surrounding surface. Failure to drill this hole may result in a hinge that may not be glued properly. After all the hinges were finished, it was time for the landing gear. The axles come with the flat spot for the wheel colors. Always use Loctite to prevent the wheel colors from coming loose.
Hangar 9 did a nice job designing this landing gear by using shock cords to create an independent axle shock absorption. After I finished the Fokker D7, I came to the conclusion that I put way too less attention on the shock cords. The axles were already halfway their travel when the plane was just standing on the ground. So you can put a reasonable amount of tension on the shock cords when installing this part. Definitely more than I did the first time. By using a zip tie you can easily adjust the tension afterwards. These are the support cables for the landing gear. All the small stuff is included in the kit. D7 has only support cables at landing gear and at the tail section. This will stay attached on the fuselage so you don't need to do any rigging at your flying field. This will make the assembly at the field short and there is more time for flying. Next step I will show you is the soldering of the ESC cables. For playing this size it's very important that you use the right size of cables and connectors. My setup will draw almost 100 amps so a bad soldering cable or connector can cause serious trouble. I use XT90 connectors for the connection between the battery and the ESC. The motor I install is the X-Power 40cc from Axiom Flight. As you can see in the name, you can compare this electric motor with a 40cc two-stroke petrol engine. The ESC I use is the Yeti Master Meson 120 Lite. This ESC can handle 120 amps on a 12S battery. And then it's time for the paint job. I used brushes and a paint roller to paint the entire plane. I used a matte coat based on water. I made the paint very thin so that the structure of the Oratex is not lost. According to the manual, you need to route the servo lead for the aileron servo along the forward cabbage strut. I didn't like this idea, so I drilled a hole in the rear strut and guided the servo lead through this strut. This is only possible if you put a connector on the servo cable by yourself. If you use a servo extension lead, this is not an option. I drilled a hole close to the rear fitting.
By doing so, the servo lead is almost invisible. I always use the Powerbox servo connectors. I use a crimper to crimp the pins to the cable. The cable is a premium servo lead also from Powerbox. The biggest plus for me is that the servo leads are always the exact length I need. I secure the connector with a 3D printed clip. The last step in this video is that I added some marks. I used the laser to make things a lot easier. When you want a sharp line between both paints, it's important to use a high quality masking tape. I will add some more scale details later. And that's it for this video. All the equipment is listed down below in the video description. The next video will be the maiden flight. My next project arrived today. It's from Hangar 9 again and it's even bigger. Let me know in the comments what you think my next project will be. Thanks for watching. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. This is free and helps me grow this channel. See you next time.